uh, I'm deciding to go through some code about uh, graph neural networks. So basically, maybe let me just go to see whether we can find an image for this. So graph neural networks is sort of one very big thing right now in um, machine learning, like is the way of representing an information by a graph. So I'm just going to show you like maybe how it looks like. We just find a nice picture. Okay, this is not exactly that great. So it is the idea where you take information from the neighboring nodes and then you can aggregate the information together to form a new representation. So yeah, it's about passing information through a graph. Okay, maybe something like this. Yeah, I mean, this is not ideal because it only shows one graph, but uh, the idea is similar. Okay, so while we wait for this to load. Okay, so there's actually some code that I've downloaded. And uh, yeah, go on here. Let's see. Okay, yeah, this is like the graph attention network code. And then we have this image over here where we have a certain node here. This node at every layer, it will take in images from the other nodes surrounding it and then you will add them up together okay perform some operations on it and then after that you will form a new uh, representation h1 prime here which is the new representation after we have updated it okay let's just copy this image link okay and then maybe we just put in the url over here what was the link to there but there is a way to add by text so display dot image okay display is it capital or small letter small letter Okay, yeah so that should be it so this is like how the graph neural network uh, looks like okay it's a little too big right now i wonder if we can change the the size of it so yeah I'll try to see whether i can do it uh Yeah, I guess we could put width and height. Yeah, okay, that, that did the trick. So yeah, um, this is basically how we do the network. Okay, we just want to aggregate the nodes links between uh, one node to another node. Okay, and then update this information so that the hidden state information of the node will be updated by its neighbors. And we do that for all the other nodes as well. So this is something that is quite um, useful, especially if you want to find out what the connections that this node has to each other. So yeah, let's just run some code. So over here, this is just importing some TensorFlow code. Okay, this data set came from um, TensorFlow, from the TensorFlow website itself. I'm just checking to see like, okay what exactly this data set is so this is the Quora data set let's just click on this link here see whether we can get this so like the Quora data set here is a collection of 2708 scientific publications so basically there's seven classes of the publications okay so we need to predict okay what is the classification of each, each of them so what you can do is like you have each paper you know cites other papers and then you have 5429 papers that can like 5429 linkages between papers because they, they cite each other so with that information and also because you have a zero one word vector for so this is some features okay the features is whether there's a word from a certain dictionary so this word from the dictionary is linked to the classes and then we just want to see that okay this is basically the features okay Based on these features, okay, and the linkages that we have over here between papers, can we correctly classify each of the papers, okay, to a certain class, a uh, certain class? Okay, so this is the data set, and this is the the code process, the data set.
So after the processing is done, you will see that there's two different outputs. One is the citations output, which means out of this 5429 linkages, okay, the papers are linked from 0 to 2707, which means there are 2708 papers in the Quora data set. And then out of these papers, some of them cite each other. So you can see that the target is this target paper and the source is the paper that gets cited at. As, so you, you, oh wow, actually paper zero cited a lot. So you can see like, maybe let's take, take a look at the citations. So citations is like this. So you can see the citations target. Okay, and then we can see like, which is zero. Okay, and then we can maybe filter out, okay, the rows, okay, where the target is zero. So, wow, this paper zero is, <laughs> wow, okay, this, this this paper zero is kind of a, a mega paper. It's, it's citing everyone, uh, citing a total of, I don't know, one, six, six papers. So, you can see that over here, we can also, like, you know, there's a way to arrange them. So, dot sort by or something. Dot sort values. Yeah, so we can sort by source. You can see that this is like the different papers that this paper cited. So, it cited 164 papers. The next one, how many did he cite? Yeah, so we can actually see the number of citations each paper has, has okay, by just doing this, okay length of this okay for j in range to oh actually we don't have the is in papers ah, so we can actually do this yeah so this will give us the total amount of see one two four this is the number of citations per person okay i'm sorry per paper so if let's say uh j okay so we want it to be the source okay sorry this is the target oh no <laughs> yeah i just wanted to visualize the data so you can see how many of each paper cite each other so over here maybe okay let's load citations again So you can see that this is for this one citations target is zero is one six six. So do we have the plot imported? No, we don't have. So we can also import matplotlib dot pyplot as plt. We can do that. Okay, then we can do a histogram here with these values. Okay, so maybe we can just put here show the number of citations each paper has okay so apparently oh okay so most papers have between zero to like okay this doesn't really tell us a lot so let's go to the plot.history settings okay to see whether we can change the bin size a bit so that we can see our, our thing better so over here we can set a range. Yeah, we can set a range and we can set like a density, a bin size. Can we set a bin size? Uh, bins. Okay, maybe I just put bins equals to one, and then we see what happens. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's it's not exactly what I wanted. Because, like, okay, maybe the bin width. Is there a width? Ah, the number of equal bins within the range. So maybe I should put it as maybe 100. Okay, so again, you can see that most of them don't really have any uh, paper citations. Only this one has. Okay, maybe I should set the range like from 0 to... So this is the number of... 
pap- this this is basically number of papers and this the or this is the number of citations each paper gives and this is the number of papers with it. So most of them go until to about fifty, right? So I can just put my range to be maybe from zero to fifty. Does this work? Yeah, so you can see that most of the citations, okay, most papers only cite one paper in this Quora data set. Okay, because if we just look at the Quora data set here, the citations, okay, maybe I should shift this cell upwards okay, because I kind of ran the code below. So this Quora data set that we have loaded, the the, the papers that cited each other, uh, most of them only have one link. Okay, there's only one link in this paper. And how about this thing here. So this is the paper ID that um, is basically the unique paper ID that is the same for the above. That's 0 to 2707. And actually all these are provided by the data set itself, I believe. So over here you have this. Hey, no, sorry. These are actually from the, yeah, the original data set did already give all this, like under target and source, paper ID is already given already. Uh, it's only this one that was processed where basically out of the Quora data set, there's a total of 1433 unique words uh, describing the 0, 1 value word vector. So it's a binary kind of encoding whereby if there's a certain word in the data set, I'm sure they have curated some words that are linked to the category. Like maybe probability theory, they use the word probability, then quite a high telltale sign whether uh, it's in the data set or not. So actually this data set may not be that... that um, label free you know like most of the time in machine learning we want to predict the output you don't want the output to be inside the input yeah but so because i don't know what words they use for this input here uh, it might be the case that the input can predict the output because the input words itself hmm, i wonder if i can see for myself what is used for this Quora data set okay for our data set, uh, one four three three words. Okay, let's let's see whether we can find it. Okay. Yeah. Oh, this is cool. Graph convolution. And maybe I'll I'll do this uh, next, because like I would like to find out what's uh the performance of a GCN versus a GA uh, GAN. GAT, sorry, which is the graph attention network that I'm doing here right now. Uh, this is the Google code. Yeah, this is the graph convolutional network. Maybe we can do this next. Yeah, but they never tell me what is the words used. What are the words used? Mm, I'm not even sure whether. <laughs> okay, I mean, this one we can do later, but let's just take a look at the GAT first because the GAT is the most. Uh, complex version i mean it's a more complex version of the uh, gcn which is basically when you have all the attention weights as one then that will be more or less a graph convolutional network so the graph attention network uh, when you do this update between nodes like update this new node with the neighboring nodes you can actually have an attention weight alpha one three or alpha one two basically depending on the, the contents of these two nodes some uh, you can do some softmax uh, key value uh, softmax dot product of all the key value pairs between each of these nodes and then you can weigh them by softmax something like the attention uh, the attention mechanism in the transformers uh, your transformer architecture is actually a kind of graph attention network yeah, so this one if you put this as one which means that you weigh all of them equally then it will be more or less similar to a graph convolutional network so i think this jt is good enough we can just look at it yeah, uh, kind of look at the paper. Actually, the GAT and GCN about about the same kind of scoring for this data set, and it may be because that the links here are not as important as the keywords. So later we can do some ablation. We just make the, the we just make this be an empty set, and then we can see whether or not um, there's any difference. Okay, so let's see. Okay, this is the so we have all these terms here. I'm unable to find what these terms represent, but they represent some word. And then this word itself uh, will hopefully give us some meaning as to what subject that we can classify them to. So these are the subjects. Okay, so there are a total of seven subjects. 
Okay, we can see the uh, seven subjects later. Uh, it is down there. It's down here. Um, here, case base, genetic algo, neural network, probabilistic methods, reinforcement learning, rule learning, and theory. So there are a total of seven different uh, possible outcomes. And then we need to sort of classify them. So how do we do this? So let's go back to the top of the code again. Where was I? Okay, yeah, now we need to split the data set. So uh, one way is to do a random permutation and then we split 50-50 using the indices here. Okay, the first half will go into uh, train data and the second half will go into test data. So let's do that. Okay, I mean, in a real life uh, practical scenario, you may want to give like maybe 80% train and 20% test or more to the training so that um, the network can learn more and hopefully generalize better. Okay, now we prepare the graph data. So over here, what this is, is uh, basically the indices that we have earlier. Okay, so uh, what, what is this? Train data. Uh, okay, we already have split the data into train and test. So let's take a look at what the train data and test data is. So the train data is basically half of the data set. You want three, five, four rows. The data set contains 2707, so that's exactly half okay, of the data here. And these are the half random data based on the permutation here. We have the binary values for the key, the terms here, and also we have the subject at the back. Okay, so what uh, about the test data? Let's take a look at the test data. The test data should also be half of this. Yeah, so I guess you can also use sklearn train test split to do this. Yeah, I mean. But this is fine as well. Yeah, this is a 50 50 split. Okay, we prepare the graph data. So, what we do is <clears throat> we take the paper ID column here <clears throat> and then we convert it to NumPy. So, what this does is it will basically tell us the indices of these papers here. So, let's just run this code. So, let's just run this code and then we see what this train data is. So, we can see that this is the train data. Oh, wait, sorry. Train indices. We need to get the train indices. Train indices will be basically like this is the test data. So maybe let me run the train data here. So if we have a train data here, this 2, 2, 2, 6, 1, 5, 7, 8, 3, 7, 9, and until 1, 5, 8, 9, this will all appear in the train indices over here at the bottom. <clears throat> so the same thing for test indices. This will give a, an array of indices for the test data. The ground truth label will be the subject label here. So if we train, uh, if we change this to be like train data subject, train data, train data subjects section, we should be able to see the whole thing. So if we do a dot numpy, we should be able to get the thing. So two numpy, sorry, not num, two numpy. So if we do this, we should be able to convert this entire column that we have received here into an array, okay, which will then be able to be fed into the machine learning system to learn the outputs. Okay, so this is the train and test labels. Okay, then we have this very interesting thing called the ages. So why is this ages? This is basically the target source. So let's just take a look at what the ages look like over here. So ages is like this, ages is here so you have five four two nine pairs okay of uh connections so like zero twenty one zero nine zero five is is the same as what we saw earlier right you see um paper zero had a lot of citations okay so yeah you can see that he has a lot of citations and he appears somewhere here i think paper zero had one six something citation so he should appear somewhere here outside of this yeah but I just wanted to show like most papers have zero citations. Okay, which may mean that maybe the graph network wasn't required at all for this data set. So maybe we should use a different data set to try it out. Interesting. I mean, this is my first time looking at this data set. Also, I'm just seeing what people use to write, um, to compare with for graph neural networks. <clears throat> all right, so these are the ages the pairs that we have seen earlier ages then we have this node states where we basically sort by paper id 
and then we take the one to minus one, which means we take term zero to term one, four, three, two. So we take this one hot encoded vectors and we put them into the node states. And let's just take a look what node states look like. So yeah, it is the one, four, three, three in uh, column length and two, seven, zero, eight in rows. So this basically tells us uh, whether a word is present or not in that paper. So this is the one hot encoding for that. Print the shapes of the graph. So you can see that ages is 5429 by 2, which is what we saw here. And the node features is 2708 by 1433. Okay, so let me just shift this up again. Okay, because I should run this code before I run all the bottom. Okay, so now let's build the model. So it takes a graph, graph attention network, takes a graph, okay, an H tensor and a node feature tensor and outputs updated node states. So again, the node states are for each target node, the neighbor aggregated information. Okay, um, this end hops you can ignore. So basically at one time step, okay, let's bring go back to the picture again. At one time step, this node here is going to get an update from all the neighboring nodes okay weighted by its attention weights and then this will be updated to give you the new node h1 prime so that's what we want to do for each node for each time step of the attention network so let's see how they do it okay, importantly in contrast to gcn the gat makes use of attention mechanisms to aggregate information yeah okay okay instead of simply averaging or summing the node states okay we apply normalized attention scores Okay, so uh, this basically is uh, is very similar to GCN. It's just that you can vary the attention weights. Yeah. So let's see how this look like looks like. Um, implements multi head graph attention. Okay, let's uh, ignore the multi head for a while. Yeah, it's basically a way to like do the same operation and then we average out the answers together. Yeah. So this is like a multi agent kind of thing. You have different agents learning the same thing and then we do like some sort of ensembling at the end so that's the multi okay i'm just going to delete this okay i don't think this is really needed to understand the paper okay this is like not very needed right yeah uh, okay anyway let's keep let's keep it here first okay in case i spoil the code for each target node it computes pairwise activations of this a transpose z okay this is a concatenation z one i the z one j what's this t though pairwise attention scores a one t okay so you concatenate the two nodes features what is this what is this transpose Okay, I'm I'm lost already. This equation is very weird. Okay, this I corresponds to target node. This J corresponds to one hop neighbor source node. Okay, so I, I take it that this J are the neighbors. Okay, so these are all the um, neighboring nodes J that is linked to I by a uh, one hop means connected by uh, one H. Okay, which is uh, similar to that diagram above. So. Maybe I should put another of this diagram down here. Okay, so this is really the one hop network. Where was I? Uh, let's just put one more code block here with this. So yeah, so this is the neighbors that have like only um one hop away, which is like one node away. Okay, then we see uh what are the attention weights here? So this E I J I believe is the attention weights. Okay, I'm just not too sure how this, what is this equation here? <laughs> what is this A? Okay, A. Hmm. Okay, this concatenation, yeah, I can take it. Yeah, you probably need to pass it through a function, I guess. So I guess this A is, uh, a function to transform this into an attention score. I mean, that would make sense to me. Like you take in the neighboring nodes plus your own node and then you compute a form of metric, maybe a dot product or something to get an attention score. 
Okay, so we'll see what the code does later. Okay, we normalize this by softmax. Okay, so this E is the value. So in the transformer, we have a key value thing. Uh, let's just take a look at it. I want to find that equation. Uh, so, uh, so actually this is very similar to this multi-headed self-attention. So uh, what this architecture is doing is this multi-headed self-attention. Okay, where... Okay, so we have a key and value, and then we have the Q is the query. Okay, where's the equation again? Yes, this one. So we take the query, key transpose times. Okay, so we need to do the query times key transpose. So what this is, is maybe this is a way to do that. I don't know. <laughs> okay, and then after that, after the query key transpose, there's a softmax. Yeah. And then after that, you multiply by the V, which is the value. So maybe let's copy and paste this diagram here. So copy this here, do another code block, uh, image dot display dot image. Oops. Yeah, let's do it here. So I think this is quite a nice diagram that they have. And this uh AI summer. Yeah, wow, well, look at this. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, 3D, wow. Wonder what they used to generate this. This is pretty cool. Yeah, look at this queries, go to the keys, and kind of the attention product, and then the attention product multiplied by the values. And then you can see that this is different agents. So one agent, agent two, agent three. So three different agents, hence leading to three different products of the values and then we can then uh, concatenate them or like average them together to get a multi-hit attention right like this okay so i believe what this is doing over here in this code is that it's taking the query multiplied by key okay and then after that it does the softmax which is this part here okay uh, and then after that we need to apply attention scores to the value so this zj should be the value so it's this part here okay so uh this graph attention layer just basically applies a self-attention uh module to all the nodes okay at each step each node will take the attention values of um, the neighboring nodes combined together that will be the uh, basically this part here the normalized via softmax okay so it's, it's like it's like this yeah so this part here is the attention weights, and then we apply these attention weights, okay, to Zach J, okay, and uh, Zach J will basically be the output of uh, of the aggregation process. So Zach J is like, um, yeah, Zach J is basically the each of the inputs already. We just need to apply the attention weights to it. Hey, sorry, no. This is the individual attention weights for each uh, neighboring node, and this is the value of the neighboring node. Okay, and then we add it to the new target node state here. Yeah. Okay, so basically we add it to itself. We add the we add the neighboring node stuff to the original node's value. Okay, let's see how it's done. Okay, so this is the graph attention layer. It takes in um units the number of units i guess that the graph has uh initializer for the probably for the attention units so glory uniform is like a, a uniform variance initializer no regularizer so there's no l1 or l2 regularization in the nodes itself some other arguments okay so first it implements whatever is in this layers dot layer okay um we have a total of how many units so we actually define how many units we have in this class okay we define our regularizer uh, initializer and regularizer which is the glory uniform and the none over here so i guess you can put here as l1 or l2 as well yeah but over here they put as none so this is how you build the graph okay we basically start by defining our kernel okay i still have no idea what this kernel is later we check but this kernel attention should be this this uh eij but what is this kernel so we need to check that 
So kernel attention is the attention weights. Self dot units times two is because we have pairs of attention. Uh, basically, node one to node one, node one to node two, node one to node three, and node one to node n. Assuming n is the number of nodes, so it's a total of. Um, why is it times two? Okay, let's let's take take a look. If you have an attention weight, you have like node one. One two. Okay, let's say we have three nodes. Okay, two two one. 2, 2, 2, unless we don't repeat, unless we don't repeat this, because if we do this like that, self times dot units times 2, it appears that I just need to have each unit, uh, why is it times 2 over here, so this is something that I'm not clear also, because it looks to me like if you want to do this, you need n by n, right, you need self dot units times self dot units, so, can we see what it, it does, okay, I'm, I'm not sure why is it like that, Okay, so this kernel attention, and this is kernel. Kernel is of shape, input shape 0, minus 1. Okay, so the input shape 0. Okay, I have to see what this input is. Hmm, what's the input shape? So it depends on how we call this in build. So let's see where is this build called. So um, this build is called... Where's the build function? I mean, they de they define it here, but it's not being called at all at the bottom. What? Oh, then we don't have to have this build at all, is it? Because it seems that we are not using this. Okay, let me see, let me see. Maybe it's under custom. The build method that creates the weights of the layer. Okay. Okay, so the layer class has a call method that specifies the computation done for the layer, which is this part here. Okay, so the build function creates the weights of the layer. So it's the hit the parameters of the layer. So over here, how it does is that it ah I see, I know what it's doing already. So based on the input shape, it it customizes the number of parameters each layer has at runtime. So this one you don't need to call it, but the moment once you create your model in, in TensorFlow, they will do the parameters for you based on this. So this is like the weights, which is the input shape minus one, which is like basically the um the input shape minus one, which is the last. So I, I guess if your input shape over here, this means the input shape for for the entire graph. I guess minus one is like the last the last layer. So maybe this is the last. Why is it minus one? So oh okay, minus one and self dot units. Okay, so if let's say you have a dense layer with five nodes, you want to know what is the input shape, the final part of the input shape, because the first variable of the input shape should be like um, the number of batches. And then the second variable should be the size of the, the input. So we take minus one, which is the last element, which is the size of the input. So it's like maybe the previous layer had six nodes, so minus one will be six. Uh, this one will be six. And then six times the next layer, which is three. Or four the self dot units here, so for the b is just self dot units. B is the bias. You just need to know the current units. So uh yeah, this is the way to add in a uh, uh, customizable layer. Okay, so graph attention um extends TensorFlow's layer, and basically this is a way to just add in our parameters to train. So there's a parameter called kernel. And this kernel is of input shape 0, minus 1. Okay, so 0 for input shape should be like the batch, actually. So not sure why they actually took 0. Maybe there's a reason for this. Okay, so... It... 
okay, let's see what what kernel does first, so that I can like sort of understand what it was doing. Okay, so over here we have node states and ages is the inputs. Okay, so fair enough. So the node states and ages should be uh what we have done earlier. So we have this as our input ages, and we have node states over here as the input as well. And actually, they don't really match. Okay, so I'm quite curious to see how this is done. See, this two seven zero eight, and this is five four two nine. It's quite different from a usual neural network. Mm, yeah, let's see what what they do. Let's see what they do. So over here we have this node state transform, which is multiplied. Uh, the node states will be multiplied by the kernel. Oh. Okay, so I guess this kernel here is a kernel to transform this node states into like this new node states transform, which is in this in this case self dot units. Okay, because maybe over here the node states is of dimension. Okay, what's the dimension of node states? Node states is of dimension. 2708 batch size times 1433. So this is the node states. Okay. Self dot kernel is of dimension. Okay, I think okay. This input shape zero is because it's maybe in a tuple or something. So you need a zero to reference it. If not, it doesn't. Yeah, so it might be because you want to reference this thing in like maybe a, a list or something. So maybe they need a zero here. I'm not sure why this is zero. Okay, I guess you see this example here is just a minus one. So okay, so this self dot kernel should be of dimension one four three three times uh this self dot units, which is uh the number of units you want to put inside our hidden layer so um, self dot units is basically the hidden layer of the is the hidden layer dimension okay so our input shape size has dimension 1433 and it will then be compressed into a hidden layer representation of dimension self dot units okay so this is probably what it does okay interesting Okay, so after we do the map multiplication, the map mal output will be of the form of the dimension, the batch size times the hidden layer dimension. Okay, maybe I just put like. Yeah, so after you do map mal, um, you just become the batch size times hidden layer. So this makes sense. So the node state transform is the after you transform it to the hidden layer representation, this is what it becomes. After that, we compute the pairwise attention scores. We do a tf dot gather, which is basically uh we take in this node state transform and we take in this ages. Okay, this ages should guide us as to what to pick from this node state transform. So um here, okay, let's see f dot gather so tf dot gather is something like this params comma three so it's zero one two three it takes in the index across the row and then it comes up with this output here so that's tf dot gather so tf dot gather params in that indices so here is two zero two five in this case this will gather two zero Two, five, which is over here. So this is the meaning of tf dot gather. Okay, now let's go back over here. So we have this node states transform, which is of this size, uh, batch size times hidden layer dimension. Okay, and then we have this uh tf dot gather here, which will take in this as inputs, and then it will gather the ages. So I guess in this case, uh. I think the ages are of a, this form, right? So it means that we will actually gather from this node state transform, we will gather all the possible 
pairs. It doesn't make sense to me because how do you get a 2D edge? Unless the edges here are not the edges above. So we have to see this call function. Okay. Okay, so we have to see when we call graph attention. So let's see. Okay, so we call here self dot graph attention units. Okay, where is my ages? <laughs> where is my ages? I'm confused already. So okay, over here we have the original node states and ages being fed into this graph attention network. Okay, where's my graph attention network? My graph attention network is here. Okay, extending model class. Okay, uh, and this basically says that I will have a multi-headed graph attention for how many layers. So num layers like the number of time steps that we do this. Okay, and then each time step we have a multi-head graph attention. Okay, and then we do a self the output is this. Okay, I sort of understand this. Yeah, so basically this is where we pass in our original node states and ages. Okay, it appears that we do it all at one go, right? I mean it looks like we pass in everything. Node states, ages. And over here where you do the fit is just indices and labels. Yeah, we don't really pass in the um, the hidden representation anymore in this training. So the hidden representation is all used to configure the network already. Like the connections between papers, the citations, all these are already passed in through the network here, through this node states and ages. And when we train that time, we just need to train the indices and labels. So let's just see what is train indices and what is train labels. So train indices is this. Okay, and train labels. So it's really just uh, the index and the label as the input and output for the for the model dot fit. Okay, which means that um, all the information is already stored inside the model itself. Okay, when we do the training itself, we don't really um, yeah, we don't really give it the one four three three one hot word vectors. It's all already in in here when we build the model. We give it this already and we also give it like the number of hidden units the number of heads the number of layers so the number of hidden units is the probably the hidden dimension of the node like we compress the 1433 original dimension into a smaller dimension of maybe 100. okay num heads okay is basically the uh number of uh, i guess the graph attention network heads that we have Okay, so over here we use three. The num layers is basically the number of time steps that we evaluate on. Okay, and then the output dimension is basically our output itself. Uh, over here is the length of class values, which tells us the probability of that particular node, or rather the particular paper belonging to each class. So this is um, a model that's trying to do a node classification. We basically give, given the, the node, parameters okay which is basically the index of the node what is my uh, what is my output so over here i think graph neural network is quite different from usual like supervised learning you actually have the whole graph given at one time okay and when we actually do the training we're just training the indices and the labels together like that yeah, actually now I'm quite curious how a convolution network differs from here. Is it only the attention weights? Okay, so now that we know this thing here, <clears throat> let's go back and see this graph attention network to see what it does. Then we can finally go back to the graph attention that we saw earlier and see what this does. So let's go graph attention network first. So these are the parameters that we saw earlier that was passed in. So we have node states, we have ages, which is the original node states, the 5,000 over pairs, sorry, the 2,707 nodes with their 1,433 uh, parameters. And the ages is the 5,000 over pairs of this one, this, this one, everything is passing at the same time, 5,429 by 2. Okay, and then 
uh, basically you pre-process this by going through okay this is a dense layer with hidden unit times num heads okay hidden units was 100 just now num head is 3 so i guess it goes into 300 different uh, nodes after that okay so this one we haven't run it yet but this should be later when we do the call function so this is the attention layer probably for each time step each time step has a different uh, multi-head graph attention call okay to like evaluate what is the okay let's see how it how this is does how this is done so firstly when the nodes and ages comes in okay it will be passed into here node states ages equals to inputs so when we call our inputs here hmm, first you see when we run this model right graph attention model we actually give it inputs as train indices but over here you can get node states and ages so this is a bit funny okay there must be something i miss out here because if you do the fit over here then it doesn't make sense unless the call function let's see what this is does a call function it specifies the computation that is done by the layer so it should work right because this is the call function that we need mm. i mean it looks like it's correct it looks like it's correct over here but um why is it yeah, let's just delete more of this uh, okay, why is it like that? Okay, let's go back here. Sometimes it takes a lot of skill to understand this. Yeah, uh, but after you understand one, it should be easier to understand more. So yeah, I'm new to this uh, graph neural network. So spend a bit more time to understand what this code does then i can edit the code okay right now i still ha have no clue why this can split into two from the inputs itself oh they actually do have this also oh, these are the original oh these are the original ones but then what is this input and So I guess when we give this here, I mean we sort of need to store this in, right? In the in the network. So we do store it here. But why do we need to have this like that? Because why is this input here? I don't know. Is the input going to be like, oh, this, this is the init, right? This is not the input. Yeah, it doesn't look like they put the input inside the model.fit though. Yeah, so, I mean, this X train indices and Y train labels are just numbers that uh, correspond to the paper number and the, and the subject number. There's no... This is not the... This is not the node states and ages. The node states and ages are passed here at the front. So it has something weird to me. I mean, when they do this call function here, I expected this call function to take in the input, which is like when you do your feed, then you get the data and then this will be called. And that's when we feed in this here, text. This gets fed into this model. Yeah, this is graph attention network. So is it under train step? Okay, let's take a look.
customizing what happens in feed. Maybe it's done here. Okay, this is something new. I never knew you could customize what happens in feed. I thought you needed to like overload the, the, the feed module. I mean, I thought you had to do your own function, but it looks like you can customize what happens here. Going lower level, you can skip passing the loss function in compile and do everything manually in train step. Oh, interesting. Oh, I never knew this existed. Okay, let's take a look at what train step is. So it could be that because of the way train step is done, we actually uh sort of have the ability to define our inputs. Okay, so let's see what the train step is. So basically when we call model.fit. Okay, you can customize what fit does. You can customize the training step function. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah, then you can do your own loss functions and everything inside here because you can customize how it's trained. Oh, yeah, hey, this is damn cool. This is super cool. Uh, you can do train step. Whoever did this code, thank you so much. Yeah, I mean, I'm learning new stuff from this code already. Even not with the graph neural network, this train step is... Oh, and I guess the predict step, you can override the predict method, uh, the, the dot predict. Okay, so over here, the train step, I guess you can use this to override what it typically does in the Keras itself. So I can specify what is your like data, what how to train it. Okay, interesting. So let's take a look. So when we have train step, we have data. Okay, in this labels will be data, okay, which is what we pass in at the bottom here. We pass in the indices and the labels as your as the data. So it's done here. Okay, uh it's done here. What's the train step? Yeah. So then we do a TF gradient escape, which allows us to record the gradients as we go through this. Okay, then we do a forward pass. Um Okay, yeah, we take the self dot mode states multiplied by self dot ages. Okay, self means that uh this is where this is where we call this call function. Because when we call a self, okay, it, it invokes the call function. So in this call function it, we give it the self dot node states and self dot node ages. Ah, mystery soft. Okay, so we save the self dot node states and self dot node ages here. When we do our train step, okay, we call this thing inside the function here. Okay, and then this will then have the node states and ages directly. I'm just curious, why can't they just do like this, you know? You know, I mean, since it's going to be the same function when you call call, can't you just reference the node states and ages with this, you know? Why do you need to pass it through your inputs like that? You know, I mean, I guess it would work as well if you do, do that without even referencing the inputs. But uh, maybe, okay, I know why. Okay, maybe it's because when we want to do this thing here, we sort of use TF gradient tape. Okay, so if we want to do a gradient tape, we need to sort of specify the variable inside the gradient tape. So if we were to do a self.node states here, self.ages here, it may uh, not be computed. Actually, it should be computed because it's still under the gradient tape. Maybe it's just a matter of semantics. You can probably still use the self.node states, self.ages. So we do a forward pass, okay, with this call function. And what this call function does is that it will do a preprocess of the node state. So what is preprocess? Preprocess is just multiplied by hidden units times num hits. And the hidden units in this case, okay, is given by down here. You pass it the hidden units and num hits here, uh, which basically means that it's a uh, there are three agents. Each agent has hundred as a hidden units. Then we do a preprocess function. To like map it to a lower uh, dimension and then after that uh, for each in the layer in the self dot attention layer we we basically do this this is like a skip connection if you're in original uh, layer we pass through uh, a an attention layer and then we add in the original um, the original input itself so the attention layer basically this is the number of time steps so the attention layer x comma ages would compute the the graph attention net part of the network so like this and then we do a skip connection and at the end we just output self the output layer which is the a dense um is basically an output this gives the logits actually 
for the last output layer, which we then can use a categorical cross entropy on it to get right, probabilities. So this is the output layer over here. This is, this is actually a very nice code uh, whoever created this. And so when we call the model, this basically gives in okay, the node states and the ages itself. Okay. And then what it will do is it will then compute what's the the logics. Okay, then we then do the loss, okay, where we take in the labels that are this is the the or this is the ground truth labels that is given. And then we do tf.gather output comma indices, which means that we from this output, we take only the predictions for this particular indices. And then we compare it with the labels. Okay, and then we see whether or not it matches. So this um, tf.gather output indices will be like uh, n times. Okay, let me just put here. tf.gather outputs indices is an n by. Uh, is, is an length indices okay by seven factor okay because the seven is the num up output dimension okay so this will give us basically like a set of numbers okay based on this output layer per per sample per in this and then we compare it with the ground truth labels. And then this here compiled loss should be the categorical cross entropy. So okay, where's my compiled loss? Self dot compiled loss. So it should be in here. So the loss is equals to loss function, which is okay. It's a sparse categorical cross entropy. So it's because It's because when we are giving in the input, we are giving in the input as a vector across all possible classes. Okay, so that's why we use sparse categorical cross entropy. Okay, so uh, yeah, this is the way. And then what will happen is that because we do it like from logits equals to true. Okay, where's my from logits equals to true? It, it means that it is not expected to be a probability distribution. Then they can actually do the softmax to it. If you put from logic equals to true, so this is what is done over here. Okay, we do a sparse categorical cross entropy for the loss function. Okay, we apply this loss here. After we apply the loss, we get a list of uh, gradients from this tape. So we just ask the tape. Okay, given this loss function here, okay, how much of it is due to all this like trainable weights? So we get the gradients for all these weights. We apply it to our optimizer. And then we update the metrics like this. So uh, this metrics, okay, we can update state. Okay, what is this metric? This metric is uh, I think it's the accuracy function. Yeah. So this is the the metric. So in this metric itself, okay, we can update uh, the state of the metric with uh, the Okay, here's the labels and this is the tf.getter outputs in it. So actually it's the same thing as here. So okay, so this metric here should be sparse categorical accuracy. Okay, which also does take in the same uh, parameters, but what it does is it will output the uh, accuracy. Okay, instead of doing the loss function here, this will just calculate whether or not the um the highest possible value in this vector here. Is it predicted correctly to the ground truth? So this will be our accuracy metric. And then we can return this uh, list of uh, dictionary. M.name is m.result for this in metric. So yeah. Quite cool. I guess self.compound metrics should be a tensorflow operation because I've never seen it before. Yeah. Uh, this is actually quite advanced, huh? this code here. Uh, Self.compound metrics. I guess self.compound metrics and self.compound loss refers to whatever you put in over here. Yeah, we probably don't need to specify this line if we like sort of 
use this directly here. Yeah, but since um, they just overloaded the train step, okay. This is actually quite a cool way because I actually overlo I overloaded the entire training loop before. It ran pretty slowly. So maybe if you overload just the train step itself, the optimization that Keras does to make your code run faster could be applied as well. So this might be a faster way of getting your code to run. Now I'll, I'll take note. Okay, so over here we have the updated metrics. Okay, and then we return the metric names like accuracy and then the result is whatever result is in that metric itself. So uh, Keras has a very cool way of doing all this. We can just use the standard uh, template. You can even do your own custom metrics as well to define all these like update state and everything. So we have a predict step to um, basically run through uh, the list of all outputs and then we return the probabilities of each of them. Softmax, gather this one. Yeah, so basically based on, this is basically doing our own prediction. Yeah, so in order to get the probabilities, we just do a softmax over all the predicted logits here that we have gathered. The test step is similar to the train step. Okay, the train step just has this extra gradient thing. Okay, but the, the test step just needs to do this and the loss yeah, and upgrade. Yeah, so it's exactly the same. Yeah, you don't need to upgrade any gradients in the test step, but you just need to do it for the training step. Okay, so that should be it. Actually, I think all this can be simplified if we use the functional model and, and do this. Um, or maybe a custom model. I'm not sure whether a custom, this is a custom model anyway. Yeah. Yeah, maybe we don't have to do this train step thing. If we had given this call, this input here could be directly we, we could pass the input directly in each call step. Okay, I guess they did this because maybe the, the graph information could be quite expensive. Okay. All right, anyway, this is uh, the code that TensorFlow used. Okay, so let's go back to the multi-headed graph attention. So each of this attention layer, which is each of this time step, goes through a multi-headed graph attention. Okay, that com computes like 100 hidden units and like three heads, okay? For the number of layers here. This number layers, I believe the parameter was three. So three time steps. Okay, then let's see over here. Um over here, this is the num head merge type is how we merge this, and this should be okay. They just concatenated them together. Okay, so the attention layers are given as this. So for each, so there's there's a few different domains of um uh of concatenation here. This is through time, this attention layers is through time, and then this multi head attention here. Okay, this is okay, this 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 part here is actually not attention. This is just going through the neural network, repeating the step like over time. This one up here. This is basically telling at that particular point of time. Okay, uh, what? How many workers do I have, or how many agents do I have, and this is the number of heads. Like how many concurrent predictions am I gonna make? So this is used, uh, this is the multi-header attention thing that is used in uh, transformers as well. So we have this graph attention units for range num heads. Okay, so this is the, the way that we are doing the, the attention layer. Okay, so how do we call this? Okay, when we call, we have this atom features and pair indices as our inputs. So what is our inputs here? We can see Our inputs here will be x comma ages. Okay. Where we pass in the and x is basically the original node state. And this ages, okay, will be the list of ages that uh we have. Uh the list of off connections in in, in this data set. So we pass it two inputs to each of this attention layer, okay, which basically is uh Is this one? Yeah. Yeah. So in each of this time step, so it's actually quite quite ingenious. It's like an RNN, but it's using uh different layers to do the RNN. Yeah. And each of these layers uses okay a different multi-head graph attention. It's actually a different one because we kind of 
call this function multiple times. So it may not perform the same operation across time, although technically it probably should, <laughs> but it doesn't perform the same operation across time because of the way we define this. Because each of these multi-head graph attention uh, object can be a different um, layer itself. Okay, we need not use the same parameters for each layer. So yeah, we do this. Okay, uh, what we do now is in each of these layers, we fit in the inputs x and ages. So if we go up here, this inputs here, x is the atom features and the ages is the pair indices, which is like the connections. So why is this atom features? Atom features is the, um, if you look here, this is the pre-processed version of the node states, which is like the hidden units. It's already mapped into the hidden units already. So it's like 100 times the number of heads. Okay, so this already pre-processed into that, that part here. So with this attention layer, okay, we already have all the different uh, heads already put here already. Okay, so outputs will be this atom features pair indices for each of these heads, each of these agents. We will pass in this atom features. Oh, this is quite weird. Okay, this is quite weird because... Uh, I mean, isn't this output for the self dot preprocess going to be hundred times three, isn't it? I would have thought that you will split this num hits into three different. So over here, this x is still hundred comma three. So okay, it's still going to be hundred uh, still going to be three hundred. And then we're going to pass this through every single head. We're going to pass in the entire set of atom features and the pair indices. So it's kind of a duplicate, isn't it? Right, then why do we need to times num heads here? Right. So I think this may be an error. So maybe like the to do. I, I don't think this is correct. Okay. Yeah, I don't think this is necessary because we saw one the number of hits to be um different for each agent. I mean it doesn't make sense to put the num hits here. So the num hits should be put over here instead. Yeah, like over here. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. So I think I think we should remove that. Uh, so this atom feature should be like 100, the hidden layer itself, plus the pair indices. Okay, and then we, basically if it's concat, it's just concatenate this whole thing as an output. Okay, if not, then it will be a, an average. You can do a re, uh, reduce mean. So we stack it in the axis of uh, minus 1 is the first one. So... So minus one is the last axis. So you stack it in the axis that is the non-batch axis. Yeah. So you then value it. Okay. So it's either concat or um, average. So in this case, we use concat. Okay. Because it's defined here as concat. The code somewhere is defined as concat. Much type is concat. Yeah. By default. So yeah. Then in each of this attention here, then okay, then I understand this code already. Okay, then now <coughs> this is the final bit. This is the final bit. Oh, this is proving to be a difficult code to analyze. There's a lot of interactions going on here. So in the final bit, this graph attention here. Okay, we take in this input shape here so the input shape over here because when we build the graph attention the input is units but when you pass in the inputs to this we give it this so we give it a list this two so input shape zero minus one will be pair indices So this will be like <clears throat> this 
the shape of this pen. This is so this is our adjacency matrix. Okay, then this attention is self dot unit times two. I still have no idea what this does. Okay, so let's take a look at this. Okay, so we have the nodes transformed. Okay, I can I can get it. It's batch size. So over here it's not really batch size anymore. Node num. Because uh we are passing through the whole thing as one graph. So node time times one four three three, one four three three times hidden layer, node num times hidden layer dimensions. Okay, so we do our node state transform. Okay, then we do a gather to gather this to the ages. Uh we reshape it. To the shape of the ages. Zero, comma minus one. So this ages zero, uh, it's actually, it's actually this. So it's five four two nine. We reshape it to five four two nine. So this is uh, no states expanded will be reshaped to the number of ages. Okay, that's weird because why do we want them to get all this pf dot shape ages zero? Why do we want to have a reshape to be five four two nine over here? I mean this node transform Okay, so this ages we gather uh okay, this is something that I don't understand right now. I need to think about it more thoroughly. Uh this is you know what? I'll 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 look through this part of the code because this part is quite important. And then we can see like how what this code does. Okay, this is quite interesting, but I don't quite understand what is this uh this kernel and this kernel attention right now. So maybe I'll probably stream again later. So let's just run this code first. Okay, I just want to see whether all this works. Okay, so we run this code first, run this code, train and evaluate. So yeah, now we let it run. Yeah, this is the problem with modern neural networks also. It's like there's so many parts of the model and it's, it can be quite difficult to understand what each part is doing. Okay, without some background work. So whoever created this code obviously quite proficient at doing this. Yep, so it's very important to understand the different parts and not just treat this code as wholesale. And right now I would say that this part I still don't understand what this is. Uh, but it does look to me like you know your note expanded here is like something to do with the pairs okay because it takes in from the ages here node state transform here is multiplied by this kernel which is uh zero minus one which is this part here oh sorry no this shape is actually not zero is zero because it's the bracket it's actually taking this entire thing here so it's five four two nine times two five four two nine times two so it's actually doing this five four two nine times two by like self dot units So this one is self dot units times two by one. Okay, so we have this entire thing, which is the I guess this kernel is the adjacency matrix. Okay. And then once we do this here, this is node num times this kernel, which is five four two nine two self dot units.
Okay, let's see. Okay, so over here is classifying most of the things correctly already. Okay, now I'm actually quite interested to see what is the the model summary. So like get model dot summary. Okay, let's just take one of the multi header attention. I want to see whether we can see the parameter size so that I can understand the code better. So pf.trainable variables. Yeah, let's find the trainable parameters in that particular layer. Maybe it's like that. Ah, okay, good. For variable in this, okay, we just want to analyze what's this, okay? Greens, okay. Variable dot name, variable dot shape. Did I do it correctly? Okay, so this code is wrong. Okay, whoever posted this is wrong. Okay, so we have the shapes of this. So our kernel is 800 by 100, kernel attention 200 by 1, 800 by 100, 200 by 1. Okay, so it's 800 by 100, 200 by 1. So at least I figure it like. Okay, let's see whether it's different for each layer. So let's for layer in get model dot layers for variable in layer. Okay, we first print okay layer dot name. Let me print out this one here. Okay, let's do this.
Okay, so I'm just doing this code to just see how, how it looks like. So for each layer of the network, so like for the example, the dense layer, okay, this basically converts this to 800. Why is it 800? Shouldn't it be 100? So apparently over here, the num heads is 8. Okay, so they have converted these hidden units to be... Where is it? They have converted the hidden units here. By a num heads, okay, which I don't think is necessary, okay, because we do have the num heads already. So let's just remove this and then we see whether it still works. Okay, so this looks more like it. Okay, dimensions must be equal, but 800 and 100 for this. I guess it's here in this reprocess. I see, I know why they do this already. Okay, because they actually sum up all the hits together. There's a total of eight hits. They actually sum up the hits together all at once. So, yeah, we kind of need this to still include the, the, the hits here. So, this is not a, an oversight of them. This is necessary. This is necessary. Let's take a look at the when this is done training, it shouldn't take too long. Let's take a look at the the sizes. Uh, there's so much to unpack in this code. <laughs> so yeah, this was quite a tough thing for me to do. Okay, this is about 80%. I'm gonna see whether I can get this up to maybe 90% or 100 percent uh, This is something that is quite interesting. So we can see that the multi header attention uses 800 uh, dimensions and then 100 here. And then the second one, the attention is 200 by 1, Okay, which is uh, the same throughout. And then in the end, we take the hidden units, 800 to 7. Okay, so uh, then basically converts the hidden space to 800. So why is it 200 to 1? Okay, let's take a look. So this 800 by 100 and this one is 200 to 1. Okay, I mean, it makes sense, yep, because of the kernel attention like that. So eight hundred. yep, so it will be like that in the end. Okay, uh, pairwise attention score will be like the node states transform, which is num, node num by 800. Okay, and then after that, uh okay so probably i would need to go and write some functions to find out the dimensions for this i shall do that next time because it's quite late for me got to go and yep so stay tuned we will break down this code together in the next session okay thanks for watching and bye